Hello and welcome. In today's video we will install the budget desktop on our bare bones only text mode console uh, Linux installation on our Arch Linux installation. And so you can see that I've already tried out Manjaro budget uh, on this VM and I watched a few YouTube videos about the desktop and I kind of liked it. So that's why I decided to put it on my uh, test VM and well we will see how it works out. I already did that once and now I will do it once again with you. So we will have to get the budgie desktop which is originally from the Solus uh, distribution. It's basically based on the uh, GNOME or GNOME 3 as far as I'm concerned. It uses a lot of resources from there. And so we don't have anything on our system which is graphical so we will also have to uh, install uh, the X display server and also we'll install a display manager and so on and so forth. So I have this uh, basically script made for myself. This is what I will follow for uh, the installation of this desktop environment. And so if you want to follow me, you can find this in the description of this video. So let's get into our VM. As you can see, I have already did the most important thing and installed all or refreshed or um, basically what updated <coughs> my system. I refreshed all the packages to get the latest version of everything. And now I can go on. The first thing we need to install is the X server, which will grant us <coughs> the graphical server environment. So this basically will produce the graphical output for us or something along these lines. So we need xorg dash server and xorg dash x in it to be installed. Let's choose the first uh, one because mainly because we are on a virtual machine with a virtual video video card virtual VGA card if you have an NVIDIA card and you are installing it directly to your system then maybe choosing number two is the better idea but I am not a hundred percent sure about that so I will test it out later on the real machine but in the virtual machine number one will be the good choice so let's proceed with the installation these will be the packages that will be downloaded to our system so these are groups of packages the X server and the X utils and so we will need this we will also need the drivers for our graphics card which will be the generic um, generic what is the VM virtual box uh, virtual uh, VGA card driver Arch Linux also has some very basic VGA drivers that should run with uh, any kind of hardware but does not support any kind of acceleration of course, if you are installing it on bare metal, you will either have Intel chips or uh, NVIDIA or, or AMD. So, okay, let's uh, go to the next step, which will be the drivers. So, you can use the LSPCI command to list all the PCI devices 
on the system and if I pipe it to grab VGA then this will only give me my VGA compatible controller which is the VMware SVGA adapter and uh, so I want to see what Pac-Man can offer so I will go with the capital S and the uh, lowercase s to get the list of all the packages available and I will grab the XF86 video lines from this so you can see all the different uh, XORG drivers for all the different uh, video drive video cards or VGA cards or graphics cards however you want to call them you even have Voodoo. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, we have to sudo pacman this and this will be uh, this time xf86 dash video dash vmware what we will install now. And let's proceed. Yeah, they will. This is very, very fast. Okay, so we have these two important things. Now we also will need to get the budgie, uh, budgie desktop. So this will be Pacman s budgie desktop, and this also comes with a lot of other packages. So let's proceed with the installation. So basically, I, why I wanted to try Budgie is not just because I love birds and Budgie is basically it's, it's a bird, Budgeria. I guess it's a parrot or parakeet, depending on how you categorize them. Anyways, I saw a few YouTube videos showing both the, uh, the Solus uh, distribution, which has Budgie as its... Uh, as its basic in-house built uh, desktop environment and then I saw like Ubuntu Budgie looked good and of course Manjaro Budgie also also looked good I tried Manjaro Budgie but I was like there are a few problems and I'm not sure if it's problems with the Budgie desktop or is it because it's running in the VM and some trouble with, with the VM uh, graphics driver or something. So I want to have the opportunity to have another desktop environment so that's why I was thinking like if I have Manjaro Budgie and I tried it and I it turns out I don't like that that much so I want to try a different desktop environment I would probably start distro hopping and download an ISO with a different uh, DE and install that but now that I am installing Budgie in Arch I am forced to learn how to install a desktop environment, so next time I want to change it, I can just remove this with sudo pacman capital R and then just get another DE instead of that, which is always good. I like that Arch has this kind of steep learning curve because it grants you that by the time you get to a working system, you will know a lot about your uh, your OS and how it works and what it does. You have to learn the package manager, you have to learn a lot, or not a lot, but at least some basic things about the, uh, the init system, the systemd, which we will be learning about after we installed the budget desktop. So. There will be, there will be new things, and also, so when I searched YouTube for uh, budgie installation uh, tutorials, I could not find any where it is explained to you exactly how this installation process is done. Mostly, it is just some guy clicking and like pointing his mouse with some obnoxious music in the background, so. Yeah, but I guess it's not that much different than any other 
uh, graphical environment installation on Arch Linux, so I guess it's possible to do that without the exact tutorials. <laughs> At least, like, I could do it to some degree. I mean, you will see that this basic uh, budget install is very, very well. It's 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 not bloated too much. Well, it's kind of bloated because you can see it installed a lot of things, but it doesn't have too much in it. So you will have to download or like install a lot of packages to get the same feel that you would get from the Ubuntu budgie or from the Manjaro budgie. And there was also one other thing I wanted to talk about, but the installation just finished. So let's go to the next thing, which is, so we need a display manager. So let me first get to the display manager screen in the arch wiki. So we have a lot of different graphical display managers. There are console display managers. I was wanted to get a graphical and as you can see by the gray color here, a light DM was the one I decided uh, to go with. And so this is the the Arch Linux wiki page for LightDM, which is a cross-desktop display manager. So basically it will uh, let us uh, have a lot of things, but the most important thing is that we can use it to log in into the system. And it is also lightweight, which is very important if you are going to install it on the USB drive as basically what I am preparing for to do. So yeah, it's 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 good. It seems good one, and it can be used with the GTK themes and so on. That's I think it's a good choice, but you can have your own choice depending on your preferences. Just read through the the, the descriptions of these display managers on the ArchWiki, and you will be able to find what suits you the most. So let's uh, get to our next step on the list which is going to be so I want Pac-Man to give me a list of packages which contain not like DM or I just ask for like DM what? Oh there has something happened here Okay, so these are, oh yeah, so last time I used grep, but I can do it without grep, but if I do without grep, then it will also give me the description. So if I, is it because if I grep it, then grep will only return the line which contains this uh, keyword, so if I add the light DM as a search phrase for Pac-Man itself, then I can get the more uh, this this short description or whatever. So I will I will install the LightDM LightDM GTK greeter and the LightDM GTK GTK greeter settings. And if I'm curious about like just Let's see the light DM, DM package. I can SI it, and it will tell us about the op optional dependencies. For some reason, my nose is very itchy today. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so let's uh, Pacman. I need sudo that sudo Pacman dash s light DM light DM dash GTK dash greeter and light d m dash gtk dash greeter dash settings okay that's my pseudo password and let's proceed with the installation 
Yeah, so most people will tell you when they are talking about Linux distribution in general that installing Arch is so difficult. And then you will come around some other Linux enthusiasts who like Arch and who use Arch for a long time and they will tell you, no, 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 Arch install is just basically follow the instructions and it's terribly simple. And basically I installed Arch Linux on this uh, VM while I am also talking to my microphone and recording a YouTube video about it in like one and a half hours and I only forgot to set up the host name which took maybe two more minutes if I was just doing it and not doing it for the video but the problem is what those enthusiasts don't tell you when they say oh it's Arch Linux installation is very easy just follow the Arch wiki about the install instructions and you will be able to do that, but the the <laughs> Linux that you get after that install is very minimal, it has nothing on it basically. Well, it has VI, and it's a console, so you can manage files on it, but that's not usually what people want when you install, like, installing uh, the, excuse me, Manjaro budget, Manjaro budget on the VM took me like 25 minutes tops, and it gives you the graphical environment in that 25, 25 mi minutes. So compared to that, yeah, Arch Linux install is difficult, but you can do it. You can do it if you have the time and you are willing to learn about your system. Okay, so let me go to my next step, which will be listing LS-1. And I have to admit that I did not look up what the minus one option here means so slash usr slash share slash x greeters what did I do wrong I should be having oh share yes I don't know, Some yeah, sometimes I backspace some character or delete one character and it did not really get deleted, but it looks like it got deleted. I really don't know what's going on there. Okay, so we have listed out the X greeters we have installed and, well, we only installed lightdm gtk greeter that desktop is there, so that's why it is there. And, well, you have to know before you go to the next step is you need a terminal a, gra a terminal program for your graphical inter interface if you don't do that you are not in big trouble you don't have a terminal but you can use the control alt keys to go to a different uh, like a tty which is kind of a, the virtual terminal which i would explain to you but it took a long time it basically like in the olden times there was a, a mainframe computer and you connected to that with terminals and now your terminal and the mainframe computer running the real operating system is the same but you can have more virtual terminals so you are now on Control alt f1 and if I press Control alt f2 I go to another like you can see in the top tty2 Control alt f3 goes to tty3 Control alt f1 brings me back here so if you install your desktop environment and forgot your <laughs> your terminal program, you can just uh, go to this uh, Control Alt F1 to or Control Alt F2 or somewhere else to get back full back to this text mode, basic terminal mode, and do that. Okay, so let me install sudo pacman or rather let me install with sudo pacman s our terminal emulator which will be urxvt what I must have this is what I wrote down for myself but it is quite possible that there is something I am not taking maybe it's a Capital U or XVT. No, okay, I'll have to. 
RxVT. Give me Pac-Man. Give me RxVTs. Hmm. I have to install. Okay, I have to install RxVT Unicode. Yeah. Okay, I did not. I made a mistake in my own script. Okay, so we have the terminal emulator now in our desktop environment. And my ear is also, everything is itching on my face. I am terribly sorry for that. <laughs> this is that kind of day. I think maybe it's because I'm tired. Okay, let's uh, check something before we go to the next uh, stage. So let's clear the screen and do we have xorg xrdb on the system? Yes, we do have it. Very well. So we need to create a new file and we will do it by echoing into it. You are capital U and R x et dot font. You don't have to do this actually. It, I am doing it because I want my uh, urxvt terminal have the terminus font with pixel size equal to 20. So urxvt dot font column xft column terminus column pixel size equals 20. This will be written into my so this tilde character symbolizes my home folder and dash dot x resources x resource yeah your x resources okay I made a file very good now I will xrdb this uh, dash x the dash ba slash tilde slash dot x resources what have happened here xrdb no such file or directory I have such file or directory XRDB. Maybe it's. Anyways, maybe I cannot do this before I enable my greeter, or maybe because. Hmm. I don't know why it's not working. I did not do this in this order in the last time, so maybe I cannot set up my uh, font for the uh, RxVT terminal just like just right now but anyways let's uh, clear the screen of this failure shall we well, it looks like we didn't do anything wrong so system we are working with systemd now so systemctl enable like dm dot service So now systemd authenticated us and created this symlink which will allow us so this is enabled the, the service so it will systemd will start this service at the next startup but I also want to start oh, service I want it to start now so I will System CTL start lightdm dot service. I want my password again. And voila! Graphical environment, baby. So in the top right corner, you can see the budget desktop is selectable here and other. So it installs some GNOME things. So GNOME is also there. Let's type in our login information and let's log in. 
to the graphical environment and this is going to be the most basic possible budget install so you have zero nothing anywhere so you have the no menu and it installed a few things like this I have no idea what exactly these things are here we what we installed the URXVT terminal is here so we have the terminal we have the budget desktop settings but there are a lot of things we are missing so this is the greeter setting so we can authenticate and then authenticate I guess and then we can apply some settings to our greeter so now I turn it to blue so if I log out and uh, log in I will have the blue background for the greeter there are some you can work with this I'm trying to you know set it up for you it's a very basic thing in the budget desktop settings you can set up oh widgets default icons you can change the icons but you don't have many choices here yeah built-in theme you can turn that off and then it will because if you turn it on this will this this what is this panel will be themed differently but I will do another video on setting up your budget environment now let's just go through the install very quickly so let's go to our URXVT term oh what did I actually is this actually yeah this seems like it applied the font size even though Hmm, even though it told me it cannot, it applied the font size. What? Hmm, anyways, things are weird. Okay, so we want this uh, desktop environment to be, so you can see that there are a lot of things you cannot set up. So this budget desktop setting in itself is worthless without the GNOME control center. So let's sudo pacman dash oh dash s gnome and my my keyboard settings got screwed up in the graphical environment control center yeah proceed oh sh yes I just said that the keyboard settings got screwed up and I just forgot about it that it's the American keyboard by default. So let's set up the GNOME Central, which will give us some um, further options. For example, changing the keyboard layout in the uh, graphical environment. I could not find any uh, quick fix to just set up the uh, keyboard layout in the graphical environment through the terminal so anyways so this is the URXVT terminal you can use GNOME terminal if that's what you would like I tried that I couldn't make it work it seems like uh, it doesn't really work well if you are screwing around too much with configuring the localization and I screwed around a lot with configuring the localization because I enabled Hungarian and Korean locales on this system and uh, anyway so I looked up on the Arch wiki what people said about setting up the GNOME terminal and they just said oh why don't you just use URXVT instead that's better so that's what I did <laughs> basically there are many many terminal applications and this URXVT seems to be one that will be able to uh, what? Oh, it's rebuilding some things in the uh, in its system for some reason. Anyways, 
So yeah, so there are this is this seems to be uh, a terminal program that will fit most of my needs. It is it is ex expandable, expandable. I mean, you can expand its expand its capabilities. And now you have the settings window. Okay. So just in mid sentence, the installation finished. And you can go to devices, you can change your resolution. I don't want to scale up the resolution right now because then I should, I will, would have to change the setup in my uh, OBS recording thing. So, oh no, this is not here actually. What I'm looking for is region and language. Language unspecified. For some reason it offers me Hungarian but doesn't offer me Korean. Anyway, formats, yeah, English is okay, but not the keyboard. I want the Hungarian keyboard and not the English keyboard. Thank you very much. Okay, so one thing to do before we go. So we, we will need to change the networking settings because under the graphical environment we have this very nice thing called net work manager and for that we will down also install nm dash connection dash editor and network dash manager dash applet So let's get these things on our system first. And uh, once they are downloaded, we will. Let me actually just full screen this. It's better for all of us if I full screen this. Okay. So let's check our system D. We can go to system CTL dash dash type equals service and we can see all the services uh, that are running and this here the fourth line the hpcd at enp 0 s 3 dot service this is a dhp which is basically the thing that asks for our router to get give us an ip address and that's the thing I want to stop. So I will say system CTL stop the HCPCD at ENP0S3. And yes, of course, authenticate very well. If I do go back to this list, you can see that it disappeared from there as it should. So I want to also disable this service. So system CTL disable the HCPD at ENP0S3 is going to be the next command to disable it at start. Very good. And now we will enable System CTL enable network manager and then we will also system CTL and start network manager and all authentication and then if I go to this, this, this types of services now, the network manager, dispatcher service, and network manager service have appeared there. And I, and I can roll back with my mouse wheel and you can see that there was nothing there. And there is now the network manager service. So, very good. We have the network manager. And we can run nm-applet. I mean, applet 
connection established. Thank you very much. So this, what I have to set up networking in the GNOME control center. That's what in my script. So let's go to network, wired connection. If I go to IP automatic DN DHCP and well apply maybe. Yeah, so here you can see your IP address and I was like, what? This is definitely not my IP address. What is going on here? And then I realized, oh, I am in a virtual machine, so that's probably the reason why it looks weird. So I can check this. I can get automatic if I want to. I don't know how it works. Anyways, this is, you can set up your things here connect automatically yeah I, I don't really know how it works in the virtual machine but you can what's the difference here I did not even realize that there are two connections here Oh, this is... Oh, okay. Maybe this is something else. I don't want this to connect automatically. Anyways, we can check if this... how it works. Oh, here is the uh, logout. Yep. Oh, and you can see it's blue now because I set up... it set this up to blue. So now I log in again. Network manager will tell me that connection is established. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal and just get one more thing or two more things before we go because there is one very important thing we are missing and that's a file manager. So let's get Nemo. Let's install Nemo. And we also want to. So if now we have Nemo. And in Nemo, there is an option. Open a terminal. You can see it's not working. Because first we have to set up, set this up to work with our terminal program, for which we have to type in a very long command. So G settings set org dot cinnamon dot desktop dot default dash applications dot terminal exec urxvt yep this is this command will do our bidding. So now if I go here and I say open in terminal, it opens a new terminal window. If I go to this particular folder and open in terminal, I am in the desktop folder in terminal. Very good. I also want to set up that Nemo will be always uh, used to open a directory like if you are downloading a file in a browser and it says open in a folder then it I want that to do that with Nemo so for that you need to download or install the xdg dash utils oh why did I type a k there and yeah, we have this. So this will be another long comment. So sdg sdg dash mime default nemo dot desktop, and this will be inode slash directory, and also application dash x gnome 
dash save search. So if you want to open a saved search file or a folder that will be uh, used, Nemo will be used for those options. And there is also one last thing maybe you want, and maybe you want a text editor. So let's install a text editor which is gedit. This is a very basic, simple text editor, but maybe you will have to edit some configuration files. So it's always good to have a simple text editor for that if you are so inclined. You can type here. And so this is, I don't want to save it, is where we will end today's video. So we spent another 40 minutes installing our graphical environment and maybe it seems to you that it's taking forever and we are still far away from having a really <laughs> functional OS on our system, but you know, we are taking our time. I try to explain why I do what I do are the last two things, how I just made Nemo that's the the, the the default application for folders and stuff like that. I did not really look into that. And I also did not really look into how what does that whole stuff mean with setting up the terminal as the default terminal for Nemo to open in. But these are kind of seems like these thing, two things seem like very specific uh, things. So that's why I just you know, you can go on the uh, Arch Wiki and you can go on. Not here, no, ah, no, Nemo, Nemo, and you will just set up. I'm sorry, you don't see it. Now you see it. So you can now see on the Arch Wiki these exact things what you should be doing, like change the. Open what terminal should you use? How you set up these things? It's here, it's written down. You can find it with a fast Google search. Arch Linux has a very good wiki, so don't worry about that. And I'll be back with some more shorter videos next time. Probably I will do a few on on setting up like a multiple keyboard layouts and exotic keyboard layouts because I want to have Korean and Hungarian input to be able to switch between them and other things like that, like more customization for the budget desktop and then I will see you then and until then, bye bye.